guys, it's Martina here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about something that's often ignored but absolutely essential to the safety and performance of your solar system, and that is grounding. So if you've ever seen those thin green or bare copper wires connected to your solar rails or combiner boxes and thought, hmm, what is that even for? This video is for you. Now, if you've never thought about it, you should still stay and learn because the truth is proper grounding and bonding is one of the most important safety features in your entire solar system. And whether you installed your panels yourself or you hired a contractor, it's worth understanding what grounding does, how to check if yours is done correctly and what common mistakes to avoid. So let's get started. So why does grounding matter? At its simplest, grounding is all about safety. It provides a controlled path for unwanted electricity, whether that's a lightning surge, a short circuit, or a static discharge, to then safely travel to the earth instead of going through your home, your inverter, or even worse, you. Now, grounding and bonding are two sides of the same coin and they can get often very mixed up. So bonding connects all the metal parts of your solar system together, your rails, your racking, your conduit, inverter cases, and then grounding connects that entire bonded system to the earth. Think of bonding as tying everything together so that it can be at the same electrical potential. And then grounding connects that network to a safe sink the earth where the fault current can safely go. Now without it, a lightning strike or even a tiny wire insulation failure could energize the metal frame of your solar system and then anyone touching it could receive a serious shock. And this is exactly why National Electrical Code, specifically Article 250 and 69043, requires every metal part of your PV system to be properly bonded and grounded. Now, a lot of people confuse grounding with lightning protection. So grounding your solar system does not mean it's lightning proof. It simply gives lightning or fault current a safe path to dissipate. A full lightning protection system would involve separate air terminals like the lightning rods and surge protection devices. But your PV grounding helps manage induced voltage and static buildup. So it's still very, very critical. Now let's break it down. So every solar panel is mounted on a metal frame. Those frames attach to metal rails and then the rails are bolted to your roof. Now, each of these metal parts need to be bonded together electrically and that's done using grounding clips, bonding jumpers, grounding lugs between rows and columns so that every panel frame is continuous. Now, from there, a grounding conductor, typically a bare or green copper wire, connects all those bonded rails to your equipment grounding bus inside the inverter or the combiner box. The exact wire size depends on the circuit. So for example, a 13 kilowatt system like this one shown right here, the DC string uses wire number 10, AWG copper ground, while the AC side from the inverted tooth disconnect and load center uses a thicker wire number eight. Now, all those eventually tie back into your main service ground, the same grounding electrode that your home's electrical panel uses. Now, if you have multiple roof sections, say panels on the south and west side, each array section will have its own bonding jumper and ground conductor sized properly for that circuit. And then everything gets connected together at the inverter or the combiner box before tying into, again, the main house ground. Now, from there, the grounding system ties in into your main service grounding electrode, usually a ground rod or a U for connection. Now, and here is the important part. The ground rod must be at least eight feet long, driven fully into the earth. It can be copper or galvanized steel, but if you are using aluminum wire, it cannot touch soil or concrete. And that's specifically based on NEC 2506485. It literally forbids it. So if you install a separate ground rod for your array, it must be bonded back to your main house grounding system with a continuous copper wire. Never leave it isolated. If those ground points aren't bonded together, you can actually create a dangerous difference in potential between your house and your solar array. And that's exactly what we're trying to avoid. Let's talk about the most common mistakes, even from the professional installers. Mistake number one, not scraping paint or anodization of bonding surfaces. Now, if the metal isn't bare to bare contact, it doesn't matter if you bolt it tight, it's not bonded. Mistake number two is using the wrong wire size. Your grounding conductor must be sized appropriately. It's typically a wire number six or eight copper. That's 
typical for rooftop PV, but it really depends on the system amperage and the local code. Mistake number three is using unlisted grounding hardware. You can't just attach any random lug or self-taping screw. Grounding components must be UL listed for bonding. That means they've been tested to carry fault current safely without melting or detaching. Mistake number four, not bonding all metallic equipment. Now that includes your racking, conduit, combiner boxes, and even roof flashing if they're metallic and in contact with the array. And number five, and this one's huge, forgetting to bond the sub-panel or the inverter ground to the main house ground. And this is often a mistake on inspections. A lot of DIY systems end up with the solar array grounded separately from the home, and that is absolutely not safe and it violates NEC requirements. Oh, and by the way, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It helps my channel grow tremendously. So thank you for doing that already. Now let's get back to the video. So how do we check if your system is properly grounded? Now that you know how it's supposed to work, here is how we can verify it on your own. So first do a quick visual inspection. Look for the bare or green copper wire running along the rails or conduit. Now this is often what city inspectors will look for and they will request photos to verify close-ups from the installers if they're not getting up on the roof. Second, check for bonding clips or grounding jumpers between the rails. You should be able to see small stainless steel teeth that bite into the aluminum. Now, if you don't see those, it's possible that the rails are not bonded. Next, if you're hiring a professional installer, make sure to have a city inspector inspect the system. They know exactly what to look for and they are there to verify the work was done per code that you paid for make sure to pass inspection. And here's the thing that gets mixed up all the time, grounding versus rapid shutdown. People tend to say, oh, I got it, I have rapid shutdown. But the rapid shutdown requirement, which is NEC 690.12, is not the same thing as grounding. It's designed to make the system safe for firefighters by cutting voltage at the array level when the power is off. But even if your system meets rapid shutdown requirements, it still must be properly grounded. Two separate things. So if you have a hybrid inverter or a battery storage system like the Tesla Powerwall or the Franklin or the Solar Edge, those also need to be grounded. Each battery has its own internal ground reference that must be tied into the same grounding electrode as the rest of your system. Never create a floating battery ground or connect it to a separate rod that isn't bonded to your main house ground. So what happens if you decide to skip grounding, which you shouldn't, <laughs> but this is where it gets really serious. So if your system isn't grounded correctly, a single insulation failure, even a nicked wire or water intrusion could energize the entire metal frame of your array at full voltage. So touching it could cause electric shock, equipment damage, or even fire. And from an insurance standpoint, improper grounding can void your policy or your warranty because it's a code violation and a known safety hazard. So grounding is one of those things you only notice when it's missing and by then it can be too late. So either if you're DIYing the system, please do your research and if you're hiring an installer, make sure there are one insured and two licensed and three highly rated. So many roofers right now will get into the solar business without basic understanding of how electricity works and they can cause so many potential issues for you down the road. So do not cheap out on the grounding. So for those of you who like doing things yourself or you basically wanna check up on your installer if you're hiring one, make sure every rail has a grounding clip or jumper, verify that the copper wire runs continuously all the way to the main ground bus, check that no aluminum wire is in contact with the soil and look for that green screw or grounding bar inside your inverter. It should tie into the same house ground. And remember, do not ever disconnect ground wires while the system is energized. Always shut off both the inverter and the AC disconnects before touching anything. One of the systems we serviced last year had intermittent inverter faults. It turned out the installer who installed it originally never bonded one of the two roof arrays together, and there was one volt potential difference between them, just enough to cause a ground fault during rain. Once we added a bonding jumper and tie it to the main ground, the issue completely disappeared and never happened again. It's a small detail, but it can make a really big difference. So let's recap. Grounding keeps you, your home, and your investment safe. It allows fault current to travel safely to the earth instead of through your system 
or worse your body. It helps stabilize voltage, reduces risks during lightning strikes, and ensures your system meets code and passes inspection. If you're ever in doubt, ask your installer how your system is grounded and bonded. A professional should be able to explain the path from your panel frame all the way down to the main grounding electrode. And remember, grounding is not optional. It's not just about passing the inspection. It's all about safety, longevity, and your peace of mind. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and it helps you understand a little bit more about how solar grounding works. Make sure to hit that subscribe and like button and let me know in the comments what types of video you would like for me to do. Stay safe, keep your system grounded, and I will see you in the next video.